Welcome back everyone. This video I'll show you the configuration essentials for CCGM. We'll set up everything we need just to get your server up and running. Let's start by downloading and installing the .NET framework. This is required for the config editor to work. I already have it installed, so I skipped this step. Next up, we need the WebView2 runtime. This is also required for the config editor. Now open your CCGM folder and navigate to the config generator. Now double click launch.bat. CCGM configs are in JSON format, so this editor just makes your life easier if you don't already understand the JSON format. We'll start by going to the servers key. This dictionary defines all the servers we'll be running. Right now we only have one called my server name one. This will be the name of our server in game, so let's go ahead and rename that. Let's see our first server's settings. Short name is used for starting your server through Discord. For this reason, it cannot contain any spaces. Invite color defines the color of the embed the Discord bot will send that contains your server's invite and server information. Sandbox name is necessary if you wish to run multiple servers. As this is the config essentials video, we'll skip this for now. Make this value blank to tell CCGM that we're not using a sandbox. Next up is modes. Start by making it empty. Now launch crab game. Click on start game, then maps and modes. Select which modes you want your server to have. Reading your modes from left to right, top to bottom, Type 1 if you have the mode selected, and 0 if you have it disabled. Now we'll do maps. Make it empty and do the same thing you did with modes. Read left to right top to bottom and type 1 or 0 as you go. Max players is how many players can be on your server. Crab game supports up to 99, but you can set it higher for the memes. You can toggle voice enabled, depending on if you want players to be able to use mics or not. Lobby type 2 means you want a public lobby. 1 means friends only, and 0 is invite code only. Required start players refers to the start command. Moderators with the start command can start the lobby before everyone is readied up. However, there must be at least this many players in the lobby before the command can be used. If there's not, moderators must wait 60 seconds, as defined in the start rate limit key. The idea is to prevent moderators from starting your servers before players have a chance to join, while still allowing them to start your lobby when it's full. Next up is the leaderboard's webhook. If you haven't already, create a community Discord server. Now, create a channel for your leaderboard. Go to the channel's settings, then go to integrations. Create a new webhook and click on it to customize it as you wish. 
When you're all done, click on Save, then copy the webhook URL. Head back over to your config and paste the URL where it goes. Here we have Win's player requirement. This key defines the amount of players required to be on at the start of a game for the win to be counted. Player IDs in chat is whether or not you want a player's number to show in chat. A live state in chat is whether or not you want the player's alive or dead state to show in chat. Report rate limit is how often a player can send in a report on another player. Up next is your owner ID. This is just your Discord ID. To get this, go to Discord Settings, Advanced, and Enable Developer Mode. Now you can right click your profile and copy ID. Now we've got the owner role ID, admin role ID, and moderator role ID. These are the roles you create in your Discord. Go ahead and do that. When you're done, right click the roles and copy the IDs to your config. Next up is the Remote Commands ID, Ban Logs ID, and User Reports ID. These are Discord text channels. Create the channels and copy their IDs to your config. Now we have the Discord command prefix. This is the character you want your Discord commands to start with. For example, the start command. Right now it's an exclamation mark, but we can change it to a dollar sign or any other character that you desire. Next up, we have send logs after lines. This will send your server logs after this many events. Events are things like chat messages and command usage. This is especially useful for getting evidence as for what's going on with your server. In order to receive these logs, we need to define a log channel. If you leave it at zero, the bot will DM you the logs, but if you'd like, you can put in a channel ID instead. Well, it looks like I've forgotten the invite codes webhook. So just like the other webhook, create a text channel in Discord, Then create the webhook. Make sure you copy it into your config. Well, unfortunately, my VPS was experiencing issues, so I switched to my home computer. Right now we need to create the Discord bots for our server, and after that we need to obtain the bots token. Start by going to the Discord Developer Applications page, then click on New Application. Give the application a name and create. Now go to the bot settings and you should see your token here. If not, you need to click the Reset Token button first. Now that it's here, copy the token and paste it into your config. We're not done yet though, we still need to configure and invite the bot first. Start by making sure the bot isn't public and enable all of its intents. Now go to OAuth2, then URL Generator. In the first section, click on Bot. In the second section, click on Admin. At the very bottom, you'll see a URL. Copy it into a new tab and you can now invite your bot to your server. As you can see, our bot has arrived. We need to do this for the other Discord bot as well. 
creating another new application. Getting the bot's token. Placing it into our config. Configuring the bot. Generating the invite URL. And welcoming our final bot. The last thing we need to get CCGM up and running is our Steam API key. To get this, we go to the Steam Developer API page. Here you can create an API key and copy it to your config. I've hidden this one because it's one that I'm actually using. And now we're done. Click that save button to save your config and we're ready to start CCGM. The first thing that we need to do is copy our config into the backend folder. This is where CCGM will actually be able to read it. Going back into our main folder, you'll see a file called startccgm.bat. Open that up and that'll start the mod. It's going to take a few moments as it starts the web server and both Discord bots. When it's done though, you'll go to your remote commands and type your command prefix. Once you've typed that, type in sync. This command will create the slash commands inside of your Discord server. Don't worry if they don't appear right away. All you got to do is restart your Discord client. And now you should see them. Before we get started though, we're going to take a look at the help command. As you can see, it wants to know our help type, which can be game or Discord. Let's start by taking a look at the Discord help. Reading through this, you'll notice that you can start a server by using the start command as well as your server's short name. If you remember from earlier in the video, we defined the server's short name inside of our config. So I begin by typing start and then my server's short name, which in my case was demo. You should see crab game launch and your server start automatically. Typing help in game brings up the help menu for players. If you want to see in game commands for moderators, you need to type help game in Discord. If you close your game, you'll notice it starts back up. This is because the watchdog is trying to keep your server online for as long as it's able to. To stop the watchdog, close your Discord bot or use the stop command in Discord. Right now the game is rendering graphics, which is going to cause you very bad lag if you don't have a graphics card. So for this reason, I recommend turning on headless mode by right clicking crab game in Steam, going to properties, then adding the batch launch option. Now if you start your server, you'll see that your game has no window. It's just the log window which will save your machine lots of valuable resources. Well, that does it for this video. In the next one we're going to look at more advanced config options, such as running multiple servers in sandboxes, changing up our game mode options, and much more.